Chris Ripay. Oh, oh, oh. I'm standing behind this thing. So I was going to stand up here and chug a beer for five minutes, a modus exactly, but I don't want to say steal Dave Thibodeau's only trick. So you get Hey Prohibition, Suck It, which is my tour de force of American beer history. So I was thought I'd answer this question right out, which is I own Rackhouse Pub, worked for Flying Dog Brewery for five years. Most importantly, I went to ASU, which is kind of like the Harvard of beer drinking. And I'm TIPS certified, speaks for itself. So this is kind of a drinking game. I do have rules. You see, hey, Prohibition, you yell. You yell, suck it. Thank you, concept. So there are some egregious pictures of uh, beer abuse in this. So if you need to turn away and you feel a bit queasy, I understand and I appreciate it. Please do not fact check me on your smartphone. I will fail. I went to Arizona State. Thank you. That was the tester. That was the tester. And you passed for now. All right. So the Mayflower landed 1620. America was born to make beer. The reason they landed, some diary said, blah, blah, blah. We ran out of beer. This is America. Let's party. Thanksgiving style. In the early years, we got Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, Ben Franklin, Samuel Adams. They kind of make a Mount Rushmore of delicious beer flavor. We were built on beer drinking. Fuck yeah, we were. So this is rapid growth. From the 1940s, mostly German immigration built the breweries. You can see we, uh, 1876 or 1873, we had over 4,000 breweries in America, and you can see the rapid growth, which carried all the way through Prohibition. The noble experiments, which we do call Prohibition, uh, shut down breweries, 1920. That's, just settle down. That's coming. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Jesus, you guys are impatient. <laughs> Suck it! All right. My timing got a little... So, 13 years Prohibition lasted. There were 13 people at the Last Supper, Friday the 13th. Apollo 13 was the only unsuccessful mission to the moon. I don't know. I, coincidence? I, I think not. So, Prohibition failed because we want beer. And so America did not stop drinking. We tried and tried and tried. Government got corrupted. And uh, enlightenment came in uh, 1933. Prohibition ends at last. The Volstead Act. The Volstead Act it sounds oppressive. And uh, Roosevelt signed it and said, I think it's a good time for a beer. That's not a direct quote, but it's roughly, oh, wait, suck it. Any good beer story needs a good beer game. That's what I learned at Arizona State. <laughs> and that's about all I learned. The rebound. We had 756 breweries that opened the year after Prohibition ended. For the following decade, it stayed pretty steady. And uh, volume continued to explode. Unfortunately, a little thing I like to call WW2 gave us a little setback. Natural, uh, nationalism, really, uh, all the manufacturing industry got consolidated over that time. And it lasted through World War II through the 80s, where lots of independent breweries and other businesses shut down, which led to the prohibition of flavor. In 1980, we hit a rock bottom. 80 breweries owned by 51 companies. We weren't in prohibition, but we were being punished. Suck it! <laughs> Suck it. 1976? Carter might not have been able to get his ass reelected, but he did legalize home brewing. In 1978, Charlie Papazian created the American Home Brewer Association. This is 1873, pre prohibition. Now, we have just reached brewing levels above prohibition. We are the 
world leader in innovation, Ska Socket. Ska and so Stone are driving us. Other industries need to take notice on uh, how we make beer and we can turn the economic re revolution around. So, thank you, Colorado Cider Company.